Hi, I'm Laura Johnson, and I'm representing the National Social Anxiety Center of Silicon Valley. I'm the founder and director of the Cognitive Behavior Therapy Center of Silicon Valley. I've been in the field of counseling for 15 years. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and a licensed professional clinical counselor. I have a passion for cognitive behavioral therapy, and I also induced, introduced schema therapy into my repertoire about five years ago. I'm both a certified cognitive therapist and advanced certified schema therapist. Today I'm going to talk to you about schema therapy for avoidant personality disorder. Avoidant personality is a more entrenched and lifelong form of social anxiety. I'd like to tell you first a little bit about the difference between social anxiety and avoidant personality disorder. Many times these look the same, but they're actually quite different. Social anxiety is a fear of being judged, criticized, or embarrassing oneself. It tends to be situational and social and work settings, but it can also be generalized across many different areas. People with social anxiety usually know their fears are irrational, and besides social anxiety, they generally have good relationships otherwise. On the other hand, avoidant personality is more entrenched. It's an extreme form of social inhibition, inadequacy, and sensitivity to negative criticism and rejection. It causes significant problems in one's life. It affects the ability to interact with others and maintain relationships. Some of the core beliefs with avoidant personality disorder are people believe they're inferior to others and they fear rejection and humiliation and they believe that these are inevitable and also deserved. I'd like to give you an example because sometimes describing some clients might give you a better idea of what these disorders look like when we find them in the real world. So these are both hypothetical clients that I've created as a composite from different clients I've worked with. First, let me tell you about Diana. She has social anxiety. She's anxious in social groups. When she's in groups, she tends to be quiet, sometimes even silent. She thinks she does not have much to offer and she thinks other people are more interesting than her. She also had performance anxiety when she started a new job. She felt incompetent compared to others and she was constantly comparing herself and felt she didn't know as much. Even though she was new at the job, she compared herself to people who had much more experience and found herself lacking. In terms of her intimate relationships, she was actually quite well adjusted. She had a small circle of good friends she was engaged and she was very close with her family. The only signs of um, some childhood issues I found with her was there was some enmeshment with the family and she was overprotected as a child, which may have made her somewhat susceptible to social anxiety. As we worked together, her social anxiety went down with repeated exposure and she was able to live a fulfilling social and work life. On the other hand, I worked with Charles who is a patient with avoidant personality. His childhood was quite difficult. He came from an alcoholic household and no one shared feelings and nobody met his emotional needs. He felt like a loner both at home and at school and he experienced some bullying which encouraged more avoidance. At work, he um, actually had quite good work functioning. However, he'd been on the same job for 25 years and even in the same cubicle. And he felt his coworkers were like his family. They were the only people he could relate to and only during the work day because he didn't spend any time with them outside of work. He um, was an alcoholic. He would drink heavily on weekends in order to black out his loneliness from social isolation. And he couldn't stop drinking to the point where he was risking his job. In terms of social life, he basically had no close friends and never had any. In his whole life, he had one girlfriend many, many years ago, and he had a fear of dating in the present. And he was a guy that was in his 40s, so you would have expected that he would have had more relationships by now. His core beliefs were, I'm unlikable, I'm unlovable, and I'm worthless as a human being. So what is schema therapy? Schema therapy is an integrative approach. It incorporates cognitive behavioral therapy techniques with experiential techniques such as imagery and role playing. The goal of schema therapy is to change entrenched self-defeating life patterns. It uses cognitive behavioral and experiential techniques. Um, unlike traditional cognitive therapy, 
um, schema therapy puts a great emphasis on the relationship with the therapist. We use techniques such as empathic confrontation and limited reparenting to help the patient um, change their core beliefs. Schema therapy is a practical form of depth therapy, so it focuses on daily life outside of therapy, but it also looks at the childhood experiences that led to the development of the maladaptive schemas. Schema therapy is different than CBT in some ways. It probes more deeply into early life experiences. It identifies early maladaptive schemas, maintaining the current dysfunction, and it's generally longer term and more depth oriented. So what are schemas? I'm gonna to describe today some of the typical schemas that we find in um, various individuals with personality disorders, and I'll highlight which ones apply to avoidant personality disorder. So schemas are core beliefs that lie below the surface. They're developed during childhood and they're elaborated throughout one's lifetime. They're dysfunctional to a significant degree. Schemas usually begin with something that was done to us by our family or other children and it damaged us in some way. We might have been abandoned, criticized, overprotected, emotionally or physically abused, excluded or deprived. Schemas develop that continue to color how we view ourselves, others, and the world. So there are five schema domains. The first schema domain is the disconnection and rejection domain. And this one is very typical in people with avoidant personality disorder. Their typical unmet needs are for safe attachment, care, acceptance, protection, love, and validation. In this um, domain, there are various schemas such as abandonment, the fear that significant, significant others will leave, mistrust and abuse, the fear that others will lie or take advantage of you, emotional deprivation, the inability to get one's emotional needs met, defectiveness, which means feeling flawed or worthless, and social isolation, feeling different or separate from other people. The next schema domain is impaired autonomy and performance. The unmet need in this domain is for autonomy, competence, and sense of identity. Some of the typical schemas here are dependence, the inability to take care of oneself, vulnerability to harm and illness, which is the belief that catastrophe is imminent, enmeshment, which is the fusion of identity with a significant other, and failure, the belief that one is inadequate compared to others. Sometimes with um, avoidant personality, you might see those this domain be active, but it's usually a less entrenched form of avoidant personality. The next domain is other directedness. The unmet needs here are free expression of needs and emotions. There are three primary schemas here. One is subjugation, the inability to stand up for oneself due to fear of retaliation. Self-sacrifice, when you're meeting the needs of other people at the expense of oneself. And approval seeking, the need for approval or recognition from others. This domain is also one that might appear with avoidant personality disorder. The next domain is of overvigilance and inhibition. The unmet needs here are for spontaneity and playfulness. The schemas that you might encounter in this domain are negativity and pessimism, which is a focus on the negative aspects of life, emotional inhibition, which is the lack of emotional expression, unrelenting standards, the perfectionist drive to achieve, and punitiveness, the belief that mistakes deserve to be punished. This domain is also typically found with avoidant personality, where somebody who's avoidant may be unable to express themselves and that further pushes people away. The final domain is impaired limits. And the unmet needs here are realistic limits and self-control. The two schemas we tend to find here are entitlement the belief that one is superior to others or de deserves special treatment, or insufficient self-control, where one can't control their emotions and impulses. This domain is actually quite rare with avoidant personality, but I wanted to mention it to you anyway, because it's one of the five domains. If this discussion today piqued your interest, you might want to find a schema therapist to help you learn to identify your schemas and how to change those entrenched life patterns. The way you can find a certified schema therapist is through the Schema Therapy Society. Thank you for listening today, and I wish you the best.